Software engineering is getting crushed by AI, and LeetCode, the platform that is used for software engineering interviews, is slowly dying. Matter of fact, companies like GitLab, Buffer, and Zapier ditched LeetCode years ago, and recently Snapchat announced that they've stopped LeetCode interviews entirely. So these tech interviews aren't just changing, but the whole interview hiring process is going through a complete overhaul. So in this video, let's talk about the death of LeetCode, the impact of AI, how software engineering interviews are going to look like, and what you need to do to prepare pair right now. And this is especially important if you're trying to break into tech or, or even in tech, because in some way, shape or form, you will be affected by these changes. First, let's talk about the death of lead code. For those who don't know what lead code is, it's basically a website that has a lot of different brain puzzle coding questions, like using ones and zeros. What is the number of islands in this maze? Given an array, which two numbers can add up to a given sum? And tech companies like Google, Amazon, and Meta use these exact questions on their software engineering interviews with the idea that it's a coding question. We can see how competent someone is by their solution to this problem. And if they do a good job, up, we can hire them. And for the longest time, it was a win-win for companies and candidates. Companies could give this coding assessment at scale to a bunch of different candidates and just hire the best ones. And for candidates, they knew exactly what to prepare for, what to expect in the interview, and as long as they worked on this skill of solving leak code problems, they were set. So it seemed perfect until it wasn't. So the first problem with leak code was that cheating was huge huge. Specifically after 2020, when everything went virtual, people went crazy with cheating. People used things like ChatGPT, got on secret Discord calls. There were even computer vision tools that could change the orientation of the appearance of your eyes. So even if you're looking to the side, like a separate monitor that might have like a solution there, it'll appear as if you're always looking straight at the interviewer. But there were always flaws in how it would work, whether it be cheating software glitching or ChatGPT giving an incorrect answer. Some small element that would make the tool unusable until things took a huge turn. In winter 2025, a Columbia student named Roy Lee created a software called Interview Coder, which was specifically designed using AI to allow you to cheat in real time on technical coding interviews. And from a pure design technical standpoint, it's pretty impressive. Now, I don't condone cheating. I don't condone using it, but I do have to acknowledge when I saw the demos, my mind was boggled. So by design, the tool sits on top of your screen. And when you feed it a screenshot of a leak code problem, it feeds it into the LLM and generates a solution for you. Think of ChatGPT, but specifically designed and optimized for technical interviews. And for the user to make sure you aren't staring at one area of the screen for too long, because that would look unnatural and suspicious, the software actually moves around to keep your eyes naturally moving. So no one can detect that you're cheating. And the best part of all of this is that Roy actually proved it worked. Roy used it on his own technical coding interviews at companies like Amazon, Meta, and TikTok, and he got those high paying offers. He passed the interviews. But instead of just quietly accepting his offers, he decided to show the whole world how he did it. He made a very detailed YouTube video showing how his software cheated the Amazon coding interview. And tech companies were furious. I mean, obviously. Amazon, Meta, TikTok all rescinded his offers, blacklisting him, and Amazon specifically asked Columbia to kick him out of the university, threatening that they wouldn't hire any of the Columbia students into Amazon ever again. So obviously Columbia obliged and Roy was kicked out. But regardless, he started a movement and he's been successful. Not only did he expose tech interviews, his company, Interview Coder, is on track for $2 million annual recurring revenue. So he doesn't even need those high paying tech job offers. Plus he raised another $5.3 million in creating another company called Cluely that is designed to cheat on everything. So for him, taking down tech interviews was just step one in his bucket list of cheating. The second problem with Leap Code is it just flat out sucks. And this is part of the reason why Roy even created his software. So as a software engineer myself for many years in my day to day job, I am building applications. I've been writing API endpoints. I'm constructing software that will be put out into the world. Not once on my job have I ever been asked, can you reverse a linked list? Can you find the minimum substring in this array? Because truthfully, leap code has nothing to do with being a good software engineer. And I want you to think about it like this. Hypothetically, just because I eat a lot of protein and I can lift 225 pounds on the bench, that does not mean I'm ready to play 
professional football and be in the NFL. Now, it might help me to be strong and muscular if I wanna be in the NFL, and maybe if I could only bench 100 pounds, that might hurt me from being in the NFL, but it's a logical fallacy to assume the reverse. So just because someone is really good at solving logical puzzles on leak code, that does not mean they are a good software engineer. Imagine there's someone who can throw, catch, and run the football at a professional NFL level, but because they can only bench 215 pounds for some reason, versus me, if I can bench 225 pounds, but I can't catch a football for the life of me, I should not be allowed to make it into the NFL. But unfortunately, with the way the system is designed, tech companies care far more about your weightlifting, i.e. the leak code, than your ability to create software applications and be a good software engineer. Or at least they used to, and thankfully things are taking a change. So although for the most part, big tech companies still care a lot about leak code, on a micro level, a lot of startups don't even use it. Matter of fact, startups, because they are super tight on their budget, they can't afford to make a wrong hire. They can't afford to do brain teaser interviews. They want to assess you based on your actual software engineering skills, because that is what will be directly useful for them on the job. One time I actually did an interview for a startup and they were building a product that could write full applications using pure Python for front end, back end, full stack performance, no HTML, CSS, JavaScript, none of that, only Python. And when I got this interview opportunity, I didn't even bother to open up leak code because I knew it wasn't gonna be useful. Matter of fact, the way the interview went, I joined the call and then the engineer, the interviewer, basically verbally described some features they had developed in their product in the past. Then they asked me to code up the internal implementation. Obviously they won't show me their actual code base, but the interview was designed to be a near exact on the job performance. And this wasn't the only startup. I recently talked to another founder and he said for interviews, they actually treat it as a short term five day long contract. They ask candidates, hey, develop this one feature end to end. We will pay you for this project, and if it's good, we'll hire you full time. And it's in both parties' interests that this works out because the founders basically get one of their features done, the candidate can show off their skills in the best way possible, and it's completely fair because it sets job expectation standards from there, and the candidate gets paid. So this is the true win-win scenario that Lead Code was striving to be. Plus, startup interviews, they actually recommend that you use AI or any tools that you would have access to on the job because if it helps you write better software, once again, that's a win-win. So if you're trying to prepare for this new style of interview, forget grinding leap code and focus on building real things. Start by using AI tools like GitHub Copilot, Cursor, or Warp to accelerate your coding workflow and work smarter. Use platforms like Replit or Vercel to quickly develop full stack applications. But whatever you do, make sure to build projects that solve actual problems, not just another coding project for the sake of doing a coding project, I am tired of to-do list apps. Oh, but what if I have no idea what coding project I can do? Try this. Go to a local mom and pop store and ask them, is there any annoying time consuming things that you do every day? You'd be surprised a lot of small non-tech business owners still use pen and paper for inventory or manually typing out customer emails. A simple AI project could be building a chat bot that automatically replies to common customer questions using website FAQ or creating a tool that uses OCR to scan handwritten receipts and log inventory into Google Sheets. Or if you're a student in the university, go to a non-technical club like a cultural org, business frat, or volunteer group and identify problems. Maybe they're manually collecting dues, tracking attendance in spreadsheets, or sending out weekly event reminders. A simple project could be building a Google Calendar auto-sync tool, an event RSVP tracker, or even a custom GPT that helps draft emails and social posts. You can use Zapier, OpenAI, and Google Apps Script to create something pretty quickly in like a weekend. Again, it's not about the actual code that you're right, but rather the problem solving skills since that's exactly what hiring managers want to see. And maybe through your search of solving real world problems, you might accidentally create a startup. Just make sure it's not built to help people cheat. The second way interviews are changing is by using more system design. And this is an area where AI can't really do a lot of cheating for you because it involves a lot of human reflection and conversation. For those who don't know, system design is pretty much a type of interview interview that is traditionally given to senior level engineers and the questions could go something like if you had to design the architecture of a company like Netflix or Spotify how would you go about it someone might start by asking would you use AWS as your cloud provider and then dive into choices around storage latency availability zones and caching strategies then they might follow up with a scenario like what would you do if there's a sudden traffic spike to which someone would respond by saying you would scale 
scale horizontally using load balancers, auto scaling groups, and possibly a content delivery network to distribute the load efficiently. And although sure you could technically cheat in this, it's much more difficult because it's more of a conversation where you're talking about the design of things, not just here's a question and here's an answer. Plus there are a lot of follow-ups and intricacies. For each design choice in storage or availability zones, you need to defend your answer and usually there are a ton of curveball questions too. Sometimes the interviewer might ask you to defend an incorrect answer for which you would have to identify, hey, that's wrong and explain why. For example, if I ask, why is the sky pink? You would have had to have been knowledgeable enough to actually say, actually, the sky is blue and here's the science around it. And if you're using AI for all of this, trust me, you will run into some hallucination, some incorrect answer during the interview, and you might have your own latencies and throughput limitations. If you understood that joke, leave a comment down below. And if you're preparing for system design interviews, I recommend starting with grokking the system design interview or designing data intensive applications. After that, try doing mock interviews on platforms like interviewing.io, where you get that real world Google, Amazon-esque type interview experience. And once you're comfortable with that, try diving into real world system walkthroughs on YouTube channels like Bite Bite Go. And if you want a solid free resource to help you out with all of this, check the link down below in the description. I'll have something ready for you. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're interested in my free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. And if you're interested in what software engineers actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might want to watch this video right here.